Thanks for continuing on with us. My name is Ibrahim Sani, taking over from my colleague Nina Rosman and the entire Niaga team. One day before Hari Raya, that's the idea right now when we look at the big announcement that is expected to be made this afternoon. Just this morning, we've received a memo from the Ministry of Communications and Digital saying that there would be a big news to be made by the Minister of Communications and Digital, uh, YB Fahmi Fadzel. Uh, at 3 p.m. today, we're going to be bringing uh, the conversation live. We're going to be doing this from uh, the entire day, but the big coverage is going to come from 2 p.m. onwards. Uh, but of course, the announcement by the minister is expected to be done by 3 p.m. This is because Malaysia plans to introduce a second 5G network from next year. This is uh, coming in from four sources that have been reported by Reuters. In the latest policy shakeup aimed at dismantling monopolies and promoting competition by the Prime Minister, Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim's six-month-old administration. Malaysia's 5G role out by the DNB or state agency Digital National Berhad has seen to be repeating some setbacks since its launch in December 2021, largely because the industry is presenting concerns over pricing and transparency and the whole notion of a single wholesale network because the worries that the single wholesale network and single government run network could result in a nationalized monopoly. Um, following this, uh, the uh, CEO, former CEO of uh, DNB has also uh, not been renewed his contract. He has been since removed from his office over the past few months. And of course, the matter is expected to be announced later today. We're looking at uh, this topic to be deep-dived throughout the day. And uh, joining us uh, for this morning is Julian Gorman of GSMA, joining us from Indonesia. Thanks for taking the time to join us and speak with us live. Julian, uh, let's look at some of the ideas on how we got here in the first place. Maybe you can walk through us on the history of uh, the uh, 5G spectrum allocation um, and uh, it, it was announced in the previous government and quickly retracted, if you remember that. And then, of course, we're looking at the telcos trying to execute a 5G network and then it was not executed. And then, of course, the creation of 5G to uh, further facilitate this movement. Maybe you can walk through us into how we got here in the first place before we jump into the whole idea of a single wholesale network and why industry players like yourself, like GSMA and many other telcos are expressing concerns. Julian. Sure. Thanks, Ibrahim, and good morning. Uh, thank you, Ibrahim, and, and good morning. Um, certainly, it's been a quite, a, quite a journey for Malaysia, and uh, GSMA appreciates and has enjoyed being part of that journey and, and helping along. Yeah, we certainly uh, remember passing mine back to the showcase in Langkawi in early 2020 um, as Malaysia first set out with some bold steps and talking about having a single wholesale network constructed by the operators. Um, but th at that time in Langkawi, I was very positive, positive mood showing, uh, you know, use cases and potential innovations um, that were looking to come on in Malaysia. And there was a, a wide variety and a lot of participants, stakeholders from the ecosystem looking and, and showcasing what they were doing in innovation. And I think since then, uh, with the passage of time and, and the changes in uh, policy and plan uh, that we've seen, uh, and the hesitancy and concern about the, the future and the stability and certainty of Malaysia's uh, 5G plan to be able to support its vision to be a regional leader. And as it stepped through those, those different reviews and allocation of, uh, of spectrum to DMB in the launch, while you know a lot of steps have been made to provide coverage um, and there's been a lot of challenges to overcome as there is in any market launching 5G, I think the general hesitancy um, has shown, uh, compared to uh, regional leaders in 5G, that Malaysia continues to fall behind and certainly looking for today um, for maybe some positive comments about uh, change in the journey. And we applaud the government in the way that they've uh, taken on this review and consider themselves that they are part of an active ecosystem that's in a very dynamic and changing digital economy and it's important for Malaysia to continue to adapt and review its progress and make sure it is setting solid foundations uh, for moving forward. So we look forward um, to today's uh, announcement um, and uh, certainly hope that uh, what comes of it will allow uh, the ecosystem uh, and uh, all the participants to come together and make some very strong uh, foot uh, steps forward to advance Malaysia's uh, yeah, journey to its digital Malaysia vision. And GSMA looks forward to being part of that. 
Of course, uh, we need to look at some of the information on the setbacks that have been faced in the rollout of DNB itself. Uh, the story of how we got here is important, yes. But of course, we're looking at the launch of DNB at December 2021, um, and it's been April 2023. So we're looking at uh, two years now. How do you present this whole situation in terms of DNB uh, 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 doing its job? And uh, maybe you can give us a little bit of a report card assessment by GSMA in terms of how well or how poorly DNB has been made. I think uh, Malaysia's decision to go with a single wholesale network uh, built by the government was always going to be a, a tough challenge. It's the only market or a major market in the in the world that's taken these steps, and it's taken them in the in the shadow of a number of countries' attempts to take single wholesale networks 4G for very similar reasons as as uh, communicated by the government around reducing costs and trying to encourage innovation and adoption. And those markets like uh, Mexico. Um, has since gone bankrupt since uh, the DMB uh, was announced. And more recently, Rwanda um, revised their single wholesale network um, plan and looking to introduce competition. That was just you know a month ago. And so two of the major markets in the world that had took single wholesale networks uh, decisions in the past have uh, changed um, and now taken a different path. And I think uh, DMB, the setup of DMB, the time constraints, the ambitions uh, were very admirable, but I think uh, it was a challenge that um, history has shown as, as not very um, possible to support and or to deliver the, the objectives. And I think, uh, you know, in looking at options to maybe introduce other network infrastructure comp competition um, will allow Malaysia to rely on some more tried uh, market dynamics uh, to achieve its innovation and digital Malaysia vision. Uh, of course, we're looking at the possibility of the introduction of a second 5G network starting from January next year. And this, of course, will affect the existing agreements within the NB and our um, uh, Swedish telecoms giant development partner, which is Ericsson and other mobile operators. Um, of course, uh, this is just uh, speculative. Uh, the cabinet is... Currently, as we speak in session, they're trying to iron this out and make this a cabinet decision, of course, uh, that is going to be mooted by the minister himself um, and his ministry. Uh, would you go through with us in terms of if, uh, indeed, uh, the government is going to announce a second 5G network starting from next year, what would be some of the arrangements, current arrangements, that is going to be impacted, con considering that uh, uh, a few telcos have indeed already bought shares inside DNB. Uh, DNB has done a lot of work together with Ericsson. How will this impact the, the present dynamics assuming a second 5G is being introduced? Sure. Well, I mean, GSMA doesn't have access or visibility of the detailed commercial uh, arrangements behind, behind DNB, of course. But uh, I think, uh, you know, some of the challenges that need to overcome is how will spectrum be allocated? Um, you know, in there is uh, limits on spectrum. Um, and so there is uh, making sure that, uh, you know, spectrum is allocated for additional networks. There's also the matter that uh, the operators already themselves have a uh, spectrum that's being used for 3 and 4G that um, can be uh, now or in the future used uh, for, 4, for 5G. And so there will be things, especially in considering that space. When it comes down to infrastructure rollout, um, I mean, Malaysia's ambition to get to 80% population coverage would put it on uh, par with some peers in the region. Um, although from GSMA, we would say that, you know, population coverage is maybe not the measure um, for success of 5G rollout. Uh, 5G is very much around an enterprise transformation um, generation. And so it's more about innovation and are you creating an ecosystem? And so with uh, an expansion of infrastructure competition, then obviously there will be more activity in rollout, um, but in using existing operators or the assumption that maybe existing operators would be used, you know, there is infrastructure already on poles that could be updated and so I, th I expect the rollout of a second network would probably perhaps uh, achieve uh, coverage levels that we're seeing with DMB now in a maybe faster time because you'd be leveraging existing equipment, existing vendors. But uh, that will, I think, enable a faster and a more solid and um, stable ecosystem. And that's what we're looking to make sure that we can attract in investors and innovators who are going to try and explore the extent of how 5G can be used uh, to transform enterprise and, and industry. 
And that's what um, I think is one of the big factors holding back Malaysia's uh, 5G ecosystem now is the uncertainty. So a strong vision and a statement from the government will look to bring together the ecosystem, attract more investors and more innovation. And you know, we think that will build on you know, some, of, some of the bold and strong steps we're already seeing. So Maranti, um, uh, depart, you know, agency under the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation recently held a, held a round table with a bunch of stakeholders looking at how they can participate in uh, growing innovation. I think steps like that will only be amplified and, and advanced by the introduction of additional infrastructure competition, which attracts that additional investment and uncertainty uh, to move forward. Uh, if you've just joined us, Julian Gorman of GSMA has just joined us uh, live. Uh, 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 he's currently joining us from Indonesia. We're looking at uh, some of the uh, possibilities of an announcement coming in from the government on the possibility of announcing a second wholesale network for 5G. Uh, that expectation of announcement that is, is expected to be made uh, this afternoon at 3 p.m. by uh, the Minister of uh, Communications and Digital. Um, Julian, let's move on in terms of our conversation uh, regarding the 5G development in this country. Um, of course, uh, everything is about money. At the end of the day, it's all about money. Um, it's not cheap, to say the least, uh, when it comes to introducing a wholesale network for 5G, single, holds, uh, dual or um, multiple um, wholesale networks. Um, we're looking at um, the uh, industry, the telco industry, facing extremely thin margins right now. Um, both of us uh, just came out of the uh, MWC uh, uh, conference in Barcelona, um, and I can't help but feel that this industry is uh, talking about the need for other industry players to help see if there is a possibility of uh, uh, industry players being subsidized by uh, by content providers, for instance, the internet companies um, or the AI companies, uh, perhaps trying to see how they can shoulder up some of the investment on development of the networks uh, or network communications, uh, either 5G or 4G. Um, we're looking at an industry that is facing uh, very turbulent times, or at least uh, 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 trying times. I wouldn't say turbulent, trying times. Do you feel that this industry is um, uh, facing the utmost pressure um, and perhaps has never been seen before. Uh, and how do you think uh, telcos, particularly Malaysian telcos, need to pave its way forward? Are we looking at even narrower margins for these existing players? Is there an M&A already in place for some of the incumbents? We've seen how DG and Cellcom has to merge uh, because of market pressures. What will be the future near-term future uh, when it comes to telco companies and their uh, fate in rolling out 5G networks here in this country? Sure. I mean, there's no doubt there's some global, ma global macroeconomic uh, pressures at the moment, um, you know, with the global economy under pressure. I think uh, that has its uh, impact in a number of different ways. A key, a key uh, factor being uh, competition for investment. Um, and innovation will intensify. And so countries need to be very conscious that in a, in a digital economy, you're not only uh, competing you know, within your domestic market, but actually it's very important to understand that uh, a country needs to make itself attractive uh, for innovation, global innovation investment. Now, when it comes to the global telecoms market, I think you know there's there's different pressures and different circumstances across the region, and the, as you mentioned, there's certainly some discussion, especially in Europe, around uh, you know the investment gap, and GSMA is an active part of that conversation. I would say one thing for Asia Pacific, it's a very diverse region, um, and it's where there's still organic growth to play. Um, undoubtedly, you know, customers uh, and consumers have an incredible appetite for uh, use of data or mobile data. And we see, especially in countries you know, like Malaysia, the appetite um, and growth in, in data is creating a, a huge demand and accelerating demand on the networks. But in some sense, 5G is also an opportunity for operators to um, introduce a more efficient network, a more climate global um, ESG friendly uh, network. And I think uh, countries and, and the usage adoption we're seeing in some of the advanced market in, a in Asia Pacific are actually revenues on the rise. Um, and innovation, which is driving new use cases, is providing new opportunities. I think uh, you know, Malaysia, it's important that Malaysia becomes part and, and a leader in that uh, pursuit um, of industry transformation because I think personally I think Malaysia sits at the intersection of some of the biggest 5G markets that we're going to see in the world you know with China to the north India recently launching to the west Indonesia to the south 
um, and centre, geographic centre of a very, very uh, innovative um, and fast adopting ASEAN region. And so I think Malaysia has a great opportunity. There is some domestic challenges with the market and finding a good um, solution to the 5G plan where everyone buys in um, and becomes active, I think will also help maybe some of the past uh, challenges in the domestic market. As you say, you've seen a uh, merger of Del uh, Digi and Cellcom, and I think that's one of the steps that we may see more of in the future, not only in Malaysia, but across the region as you drive to a, a more efficient and a more digitally centred economy. Um, and it's important, and uh, we applaud the Malaysian government for taking the steps and understanding that they are part and they're very central to making sure that Malaysia's digital economy um, has the advantages and the attractiveness um, to get investment um, and help not only become an inclusive digital economy, but make sure that's a very sustainable uh, mobile uh, industry that's supporting the foundations for a digital economy. Um, the last time uh, we had you on, uh, we were talking about uh, the G GSMA report and the upside of uh, po a possibility of Malaysia enjoying not a single wholesale network. Or, uh, uh, and, and do you feel that some of the items that is being presented in that report that was published earlier this year could be materialised because of the action that the government is taking now? Or do you think that it still takes a lot of effort in terms to realise the theoretical upside that is being presented in the GSMA? SME report, Julian? Well, I think, uh, it, I mean, it's a journey. There's no doubt, and we see it across the most advanced markets uh, who are taking on 5G. Is it's, it's not a single single decision to launch 5G, maybe make some spectrum. It's part of a journey. And I mean, by example, the World Radio Council uh, this year, we're considering, um, you know, allocation of, of more spectrum um, for 5G because uh, the expect forecast growth in data and usage of 5G over the next 5, 10, 15 years is, is significant. And so 5G is, is not just about being launched, it's actually a journey where we're going to see transformation, you know, and just like in 4G where, you know, at the beginning it was hard to see the, the platform gig economy that evolved, we're going to see real changes in the way we interact with each other around the world and how industry operates, um, where digital moves from being a transformation of physical to digital to actually digital being the core. And that's what we see as a real change um, in, in the eras from digital societies where we've been focusing on transforming physical to digital to actually what we call digital nations, where the core of our nations, the definition of our nations, and not about physical lines in the sand or central institutions, but around digitally based and, and centered uh, focus and a vision. And I think that is uh, where we're gonna see the real change in, in the future. And so while our report earlier in the year and even the reports we made earlier were around how to make best of the journey that Malaysia had started, um, it is not easy to just switch those and change them overnight. And I think the, the government and the industry acknowledge that. It's important that today's decision brings the ecosystem together and we start to take that journey and work to make sure that, you know, we are achieving the KPIs that really support Malaysia um, and willingly and that attracts the innovation. And I think, uh, you know, I think the steps we've seen even now with the anticipation of maybe this review changing this framework, uh, are very encouraging um, and you know from a GSMA point of view at Mobile World Congress you know we see a lot of active interest in you know, Malaysia taking uh, further steps to reassert itself as a leader in the region which I think has sort of lost um, in these last couple of years as as the kind of uncertainty in the 5G plan has um, has undermined confidence um, and and commitment to move forward. The next two questions I'm going to ask you is going to be a bit tricky for you to answer. I know this because uh, you're not part of the government, you're not part of Ericsson. So let's try to approach this in a very uh, uh, objective, third-party, um, bystander kind of view. First of the two questions, what is going to uh, happen to Ericsson and its uh, commercial terms with the government um, via DNB or via the dual wholesale network expectations of the announcement later on this afternoon. The second is what happened to the kind of arguments that the government has been presenting on defending single wholesale network? Does this mean that all these arguments were actually not, no longer valid or the arguments were actually weak that was presented by the government? How do you approach these two conversations, Ericsson and the government defending single wholesale network uh, over the past few years? 
Sure. I mean, there's obviously a commercial relationship uh, between DMP and Ericsson, which would need to be uh, to dealt with. Um, and I'm sure the industry uh, will be part of that discussion um, because, I mean, it is an asset that's been built that's covering, you know, more than 50% of the population at the moment. And so it has to play a big part in uh, Malaysia's 5G future. And I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that consideration has been made in that steps. And I think uh, maybe the 80% population coverage target for the end of the year is a, is a nice step to, to, to maybe introduce, um, you know, whatever the changes they might consider appropriate. Going back to, uh, you know, where, where does it uh, go from here? I think, um, you yeah, know, there is a, a lot of, of interest in, in participating uh, in Malaysia. And you know the, the changes that, that will be required uh, are quite you know quite substantial. Require some commitment and participation from the operators. And I think that you know we'll see. Uh, you know there has already been you know positive commitment from a number of the operators to, to even participate in D, DMB. And so I think generally the potential, uh, the willingness, and the and the commitment to move forward is there. Um, so uh, I'm sure. That uh, whatever is decided today, that uh, it can move forward positively. Okay, and of course, uh, let's now look at the hypothetical uh, positioning and timeline of the announcement. Uh, we're looking at 3 p.m. announcement, and of course, uh, assuming that uh, it is what it is, i.e., the announcement of single uh, dual wholesale network uh, starting next year. What is the real realistic timeline that you expect in terms of the rollout? And how far are we behind our peers in this region and globally? Are we really uh, uh, far behind or is this a figment of our imagination? Um, we're really just, you know, with just behind the curve. What's the story there, uh, Julian, when it comes to timelines? Well, I think it's important to understand that 5G is, you know, not a short-term sprint. Um, you know, we are seeing uh, to the north, Malaya, uh, Thailand is more than 85% uh, population uh, coverage with a competitive uh, network situation. Singapore, you know, it's hard to compare with Singapore, but Singapore is in the 98 plus percent uh, population coverage of single of uh, standalone networks, and they're moving fed very fast. I think the, you know, the numbers that people look at and say maybe compare whether Malaysia's um, you know, on par where it should be is, you know, from a penetration and consumer adoption, you know, is falling behind even Indonesia, which hasn't really, hasn't even issued 5G spectrum yet. Um, and so I think um, there's real possibility that uh, Malaysia can catch up to those nominal markers quite quickly, you know, the 80% population coverage in the year, increasing uh, or getting those latent, uh, maybe 5G device owners on the network uh, moving. Um, it's probably not a huge market, a uh, huge step um, with active and uh, you know interest from the operators and the network operators. But I think the challenge is going to be really in the innovation space. And you know it's you know there's a number of agencies we've been working with with MDEC, um, Ranti, as I mentioned. Obviously, we we continue to work with MCMC, and we're encouraged that there is a very positive uh, enthusiasm and energy to get this right. Um, and you know to us. It's no, you know, making these step quite early in the journey actually isn't admirable. You know, uh, Rwanda took 10 years into a 25 year journey uh, to take those, um, to take vision that it's single wholesale 4G network wasn't um, delivering it, its ambitions. And so it's, uh, I think it's never too late, you could say. Um, and it's encouraging that there's so much uh, commitment and, and support from the industry and the ecosystem to to look at this review and see the results. So I think nominal measures, it won't be too hard to catch up on. Um, more of the inner focus needs to be making sure that we're activating that ecosystem and the diversity of innovators. And with the agencies from Malaysian government uh, being actively involved, the operators may be becoming more involved and more maybe vendors and ecosystem investors uh, coming on board. And it's just the removal of the uncertainty would do a big uh, boost of energy for Malaysia's uh, journey. And I do think that Malaysia can, uh, can grow into more into its uh, regional leadership ambitions um, within you know, only a couple of years. Um, uh, final word, Julian, very short one. Uh, do you feel that this is a, a positive development for Malaysia when it comes to uh, 5G uh, network development? I think I think it's a, a, a positive step, and I think uh, the the watchers, the the observers are looking for it. And we've seen some recent reports from analysts um, saying, you know, they expect a positive boost 
uh, to the industry uh, as equity values um, and commitment. I think that will help um, with along with the certainty of a, of a commitment decision to move forward. Thank you very much. That was Julian Gorman of GSMA joining us live from Indonesia. We are also keeping track and keeping an eye on Putrajaya right now because much of the development might happen this afternoon at 3 p.m. Um, Astro Awani will be presenting the uh, news and uh, coverage as well as in-depth analysis on 5G. Uh, we will have um, expert analysis on guests on 5G and network uh, throughout the day. Uh, one uh, particular guest that needs to be uh, mentioned right now that will be presented uh, to you uh, later on in this afternoon is uh, Datuk Dr. Rais Hussein of ME Research. Uh, ME Research has been presenting some uh, stories uh, and research on uh, dual wholesale network or multiple wholesale networks on 5G that is going to come on to at 2pm and of course uh, throughout the day we'll be bringing some more updates on that. Again, 3 p.m. is the time when the uh, Minister of Communications and Digital is expected to uh, make the announcement uh, that is going to come after the cabinet meeting that is currently being done today, right now, in fact, at Putrajaya. Uh, and of course, this is a development that many of us uh, in this sector and industry observers are watching, not just domestically, but of course, internationally. 5G is critical, if uh, not to be seen um, as a, a national security issue. Uh, and of course, uh, network communications digital and of course telecommunications is indeed a very critical factor for us to be presenting right now uh, my name is ibrahim sani continue to stay with us on astro awani uh, for now we'll go for a short break when we come back my colleagues are going to be continuing on the conversation on 5g and issues relating to current affairs around the country and abroad we'll be right back after these messages <laughs>